This video presents five tips for effectively searching OER repositories, referatories, and other collections. Tip one is to save yourself some time by starting your search in the most relevant, highly curated collections, such as the resource listings over at the Open Educational Resources Initiative website. If you're teaching in the California Community Colleges, hands down your most relevant place to start is going to be at the OERI website, which is a project of your peers at the um, Statewide Senate. So here you're going to find highly curated, very relevant listings of OER resources already in use at other California community colleges that are organized helpfully by discipline, by transfer model curriculum, and by Cal State GE requirements. For example, let's look at the discipline listings for anthropology. These listings have been curated by California Community College anthropology instructors who are also trained in OER. And so resources here are vetted for quality and appropriateness. And this is not to say that materials there will 100% work for your course, which may have a different focus or different needs, but it is a great first stop. You can also find on the discipline pages links to archived webinars that have been held for your discipline. So for example, here are links to recent faculty discussions on what anthro resources are currently available, what's planned, basically the state of OER in this discipline. And these discussions are just a really great way to stay current on progress in OER in your field and to connect and collaborate with um, others working in your field. The webinars are an ongoing thing, so you can find links to upcoming ones here at the OERI website also. Um, so if you're working on a ZTC pathway for one of our ADTs, including associated GE requirements, the listings by transfer curriculum and GE will be invaluable starting places. So um, be sure to take a look at those and all the offerings organized in that way. Finally, discipline leads have also identified known gaps in available OER resources, which can save you time and frustration looking for materials which may not yet exist or um, may be of uh, uncertain quality. So if you don't find the resource that works perfectly for your course at the OERI website, or if you choose to expand your search more broadly for any reason, many other larger repositories and referatories exist where you can search for, review, and access OER. And the next few tips refer to searching in these repositories. So tip two um, suggests that you browse repositories by subject or discipline rather than relying only on keyword searching. And this is because materials within large OER repositories are often contributed by their creators, so they're not indexed or tagged with keywords in a controlled or consistent way. And as a result, keyword searching at large repositories might not return the best results. So instead, if, you, if it's an option, browse by subject or discipline, drilling down into subject areas, and browse broadly, starting with um, subject areas that are broader than yours but may still include information on your subject. And then along with that, advice, tip three suggests that you should keyword search repositories if your subject matter is multidisciplinary especially. Let's look at a few um, examples where subject browsing and keyword searching might provide different but complementary results. And we can do that starting in one large OER repository, which is that on the LibreText site. Um, and just a quick word on LibreText and what it is, because it is a complex platform and it can be confusing. It's an OER authoring platform where you can create um, and or remix existing OER to create new sources. It's also a platform hosting innovation like open source interactive multimedia. Um, but here we're looking at its function as a repository of existing OER textbooks. 
So this includes those that are created on the LibreText platform, but also those that may have been created elsewhere, such as through OpenStax. And um, the textbooks are organized into subject libraries. So if you were looking for texts in anthropology, you would first um, determine the most relevant library, in this case, social sciences, and then drill down to find um, the variety of relevant texts within Anthro. Um, here it's organized into um, more specific facets of that field. And in cultural anthropology, you can see there are a number of texts. And then you can click into any one of these titles and um, read the whole thing, determine whether it's appropriate for your course. All the chapters are there. And then if you do want to use it, uh, because LibreText is a repository, there's a link to um, download a file, which you can then uh, import directly into Canvas and have the text in your course. So taking another example with a discipline that's more uh, multidisciplinary, if we look for text in environmental science, you might start broadly in one facet of environmental science in biology and take a look in that library, then uh, go into the bookshelves there. And indeed, there is a subcategory here for ecology. And if you go into that, that is probably where the most relevant texts for environmental science are going to be, or um, the most basic. But again, because environmental science is so multidisciplinary, you might want to look at other aspects of it. For your course, you might need content related to engineering or um, more like geosciences. So in that case, this would be a time to search rather than drill down through a specific library. You can search the biology library from this screen. But to search across all of the LibreText libraries, you actually need to invoke a different tool, and that's the LibreCommons um, search interface. So here I've done a search across all the LibreText libraries for environmental science. And looking at the results, you can see um, some of the limitations of search and some of the problems we were mentioning with um, the way that things are tagged or indexed. But it's also the case that um, there may be things in here in atmospheric sciences or in American government or philosophy or, um, or engineering or some other aspect of environmental science that you wouldn't have found just in the biology to ecology route. Let's take another example, um, searching for texts on early childhood education. We're searching across all the libraries again in Libra Commons. And um, again, we can see that we get some oddities in our results. Um, so this is a good time to mention the uh, filters that are available in the advanced search um, if we open that up. And one thing we can do is under the subject filters, there's much more sort of granular um, subject divisions here than we get by um, drilling down through the libraries. So I can select early childhood education there as a subject. I might also want to filter by the type of uh, Creative Commons license or by course ID or in some other way. But if I um, just leave it at subject there and uh, redo the search, then the results that we get are much more relevant. They are also all in the social science library, so um, we could have gotten this result just by drilling down through social sciences and then into um, early childhood education. And that does provide a great segue into our next tip, tip four, which is to use those provided tools and filters to narrow down your search to more relevant results. And we saw that, of course, in the um, Libra Commons advanced search, but it's even more important at a really large repository. So we'll take a look at um, Merlot, which is a site that includes not just um, open educational textbooks, but a 
large number of other types of open source educational materials for a wide variety of audiences. So the filtering becomes real important um, there. And you can begin your explorations at Merlot by drilling down into discipline areas in the filters there. But I'm going to start by um, searching for art history in this case. And I have 633 results. Um, and that's partly because there are so many different types of materials in here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is filter by material type to just get open access textbooks. And then um, I can also filter by audience. So I only want college um, lower division or general ed appropriate materials. Um, and I might want to filter in other ways. I could choose to see only things that have reviews or um, that have no cost. Uh, or um, have, in this case, I'm going to select having a Creative Commons license. And so at this point, I might just um, start to take a look at some of these materials. Um, and I can see, in this case, the text has um, some peer reviews and some ratings. I can link out to the material. Merlot is a referatory, so it's linking me out to um, where I can find the text. And there is a um, comment from a faculty member who's using this source, which again provides a nice segue into our next tip. And our final tip, tip five, is to be on the lookout for helpful features such as peer reviews or information about the accessibility of resources. And a good site that's real strong in this area is the Cool for Ed site, which is a um, collaboration, a cooperation between the three segments of higher education in California. And they provide a couple of different portals into their content. And the faculty showcase is one area that you might want to explore just for ideas about how faculty are using different OER. And then the CID course materials portal. In this case, we'll look again at art history and select um, specifically the survey of Western art from prehistory. And what's uh, useful and unique about this site is the quality evaluations that are provided by faculty who have really reviewed and provide detailed rubrics and textual comments about the text so that you can get a really good idea of what the strengths and weaknesses of the content and usability are for um, different sources. And then a different type of evaluation to look out for is an accessibility evaluation, where again, there's a summary and a score of how the, um, the source performed in terms of accessibility. And then sometimes links to more detailed reports are available. So summing up, you want to start with the most relevant and highly curated collections, and I really recommend the OERI website for that. You want to browse repositories by subject, starting broadly and then drilling down. Most often that will um, be your best bet, but do also keyword search if needed, especially for subject matter that's cross-disciplinary. You might find important resources that way. Um, do use any available tools to narrow your results by type, by audience, by license type, and other filters. And take advantage of those peer reviews, comments, and accessibility evaluations where those are available.